Hello, and welcome to another fact-filled adventure video from Havoc Sun. Today I'm going to talk about my Ion LP dock. Now, before I get started, let me just say that this did not do well for Ion. One of the biggest problems was this raised platter you see here. Uh, part of it went inside the groove, and if you got a slight alteration in the platter, which is made of plastic, it would uh, bend, it warp, and it would rub, which would slow the music down, slow the LP down, and you could also hear the rubbing. The, uh, the, the virtual rubbing would transfer into the needle stylus and come across in your recording. So not only did it the, the music speed up and slow down, but you would also hear this weird rumbling, which the platter deformation, if you will, happened quite a lot. As a matter of fact, I bought several of these because I personally love them. And uh, every single one that I've bought, every single one that my friends have had, they all have the same problem with the platter. Uh, the second problem that you have with this is the tracking on the stylus. It is very difficult to set the tracking on these. So I'm going to go over that with everyone today. The first thing I want to do is I want to go over how you can fix the platter rub. Okay. To fix a platter rub, it's actually a pretty easy little method. What you see right there is just a little bit of Teflon tape. Not a lot, just a little bit. Because this center peg, I don't know really what you would call it, is barren driven. And it's meant to spin. So it's okay if you put some here. So what I did is I just took a little bit of Teflon tape. And I just wrapped it around one time just to get the platter to lift up. Just, just, just a hair, not a whole lot. Uh, the, and that lifts the platter up enough to stop the rubbing on most cases, unless you got a really bent platter. The next thing is the tracking force. On the stylus, it's never good. So what I notice is right here, if we set it right down here, you're not hurting the sensitive needle. Um, it just fits in between the groove there. I don't think it was designed that way. There's no manual or documentation to tell you to set it that way, but I just found that if you put the stylus right there, because if you try to adjust the stylus on the resting arm, it, it's not going to work. Your balance is going to be off when you swing it over. And don't tell me why. I don't know why. But every LP dock, the same thing. The only way you can get a true balance reading is to bring it over here into the center. So then what you do is you, you back off this spindle here, this weight, the counterweight. And that it's slightly threaded, but you can actually push it or pull it in. You can move it that way, but once you get it close, then you can just turn it, and it, it will back up or go forward. Uh, probably shut that off. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to back it up to where the stylus floats. Just floats. Right there. That's zero grams. Once you've got that set, then what you do is you go here. Now let me zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. So what you do is once you've zeroed it and it's balanced, then you bring the counter and you just kind of move it to zero. It, I, I don't know why they did it this way, but that dial moves independently from the counterweight. But then when you move the counterweight, the dial moves with it. Go figure. Anyway, once that's done and you've got it zeroed, then what you can do is you can go ahead and you can, well, let me get it out of here. Nobody wants to see a close-up of my hands. My God, I've put them in so many different solvents through the years. They look 100 years old. Anyway, once you've got that set to zero, then what you can do is you can 
spin the counterweight with the dial moving with it. So you're going to spin it by the counterweight, not touch the dial anymore, to your desired uh, tolerance. I like a two and a quarter grams. Two and a half grams is fine. You can actually go all the way up to four grams. The dial represents a max of four grams. So I'm thinking that's all they want to see on this stylus. Uh, I've run it at four grams just to see with no damage to my uh, LPs. So once you've done that, then you've now got the tracking force correct. So then you can put it back here, lock it in place. Then what you're going to do, let me show you here how you put your platter back on. So you basically wrap the rubber around inside loom of the platter to where, you know, she sits like that. And you kind of stretch it out right here in the hole. You have two. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put that band over this pedestal there. Capstan, that's your drive motor. It's This is a belt-driven turntable. So then you drop it down, you push it. Sorry, I'm pushing the tripod at the same time. You just put a little bit of force on that LP to get that on that platter to get that uh, platter to sit evenly to what you just did. And then you let go of the band. Voila. And it's always a good idea to shake these things out. Boy, they collect a lot of dust. Okay. Now you've got a platter that's not going to rob and your tracking force on your cartridge is going to be perfect. Look at that. Now, you I don't know if you can see closely. You can actually see this platter is out of balance. It's already warped. But it's not rubbing because it's just lifted away. Push it down a little bit more. Maybe you can even it up. No, you really can't. The platter's already bent. And they all do that. It's notorious. That's a quick way to fix it. You've lifted it up enough. It doesn't affect the tracking or anything else. You're good to go. So now let's hear what it sounds like. Okay, so um, there's another thing you can do with this as well. And I'll show you that in a minute. The back of these units which is kind of a nice little feature. You also have anti-skating. So if you notice that your needle seems to lag, bounce back this way or bounce ahead, you adjust that with this little dial there in the back. So lift the clip, pick up your tone arm, set it down on your record. You press the play button. Let's give it some power here. Oh, hang on. And my receiver turned to monitor because it was set for my TV last night. Okay, so that's how it plays. Now you notice you got a iPod there in the back. This is one of the reasons why I love this thing. Let's say you want to record this track, or this album. Another thing to realize is this is a very manual-driven turntable, meaning not just a belt, but um, there is no on-off uh, for the turntable. There's a play and a pause. When you get to the end, it's going to bounce back here. It's not going to auto-reject either. This is a very manual LP uh, turntable. And I think they do that for a reason because they want you to be at it while you're recording for whatever reason. It's one of the only one ions that I know that doesn't have an automatic eject for the tone arm, but whatever. It, I don't really care. I, I usually, when I play this, when I use this turntable, I'm using it for this very purpose. Okay, so let's go back now uh, to the iPod. You see the iPod sitting over there in the corner? It's bouncing right there. Um, what you could do now is you press 
Oh, wonderful, Mark. Careful. Press these two buttons. It's hard to do while not getting in the way. Yeah, it's kind of tricky. You gotta. And it's gonna be blinking. Hang on a sec. Problems? Okay, it's been so long, I forgot how to do it. You basically press and hold those two buttons. If this is button one, it's button two and three. Once you hold it, the light will start blinking and then it'll go solid. Once it goes solid, the iPod is starting to record. You can see the counter over there is already moving up, but I don't really care, this is for test purposes. So basically, it gives you about two seconds. Once you get that, so basically what you do is you cue it up and then you hit play. That should make that be just about perfect. Now, a lot of times people will play a track and hit the pause button. That never gets old. <laughs> now they do that because they want to cancel, or they want to stop the recording and start a new track. I don't do that. I don't waste the effort. I let it play all the way through because I always take these records uh, to Audacity, which is a software. It's free. You can download it. It takes pops, hisses, scratches out. It'll also set up the tracks for you as well. And it's free to download. And I always take all of my LPs uh, into Audacity before I make them a final MP3. So what I do is I play it cradle to grave all the way through. Now, I picked this album for a reason. Look, I like all kinds of music, but I really like orchestra music. I mean, I, I, I'm i a, a fan of a classic rock, but I have had my share of heavy metal and even punk rock. I mean, I, I thought Sex Pistols when I first heard that album, never mind the Bullocks. I was like, wow. So, I mean, I've listened to it all. Um, but I don't know. When you get a little bit older you realize that listening to all kinds of different music, especially uh, huge orchestras, man, it's just, I don't know, I get a thrill out of that. And uh, Percy Faith had an orchestra that I think at one time was one of the best. It was in the 60s, 70s, uh, very great orchestra music. And uh, this is a Percy Faith Christmas album in his orchestra music. This is pretty rare. I bought it anyway at Goodwill, even though it was damaged, uh, because I don't care. My audacity can usually get everything out. And if you notice, there's some heavy duty scratches on it. And I, I, that's why I play it cradle to grave, because I'm gonna audacity it. I'm gonna audacity the hell out of this one. So any popping or hissing or anything that you hear, don't worry about it. Audacity is gonna audacify it. So basically what's happening, because that red light is on, is she's recording back here. You can see I'm at three minutes now, but most of that was me rambling. Okay, so that pretty much is it. Uh, oh, there was one other feature that I wanted to show you. <laughs> I swear that never gets old. I love that. I don't know. Go sue me. All right, so you could cancel that. Uh, boy, I forgot which button it was to cancel it. I wonder if it's the two again. You know, it's been so long since I've used it that I forget. How about this? Will this work? Booyah! <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's saving. So just turn the power off and you're good to go. I mean, I don't know if that's the professional way to do it, but hey, it works. Okay, so I can pull this out because I don't want to move this around in the dock. 
Let me flip the turntable around because there's something else I want to show you. And I'll try not to hit the tripod more than a thousand times during this video. Okay, most modern amps, receivers, do not have phono in anymore. So um, if they don't, then what you do is you take your phono jacks and you plug it into an auxiliary CD, whatever, in your receiver, and you flip this switch to RCA line. And that what that'll do is that preamps it so that you don't need phono. But surely if you do have a phono input on your receiver, use it because line voltage, it always comes out a little bit clearer. So this is RCA phono and this uh, amp has a record player in. Um, when you go RCA line, you may get feedback like that, hear that? You can dial that out by adjusting the gain here. Also, you could go direct with a USB out if you wanted to. I never have. One other cool feature, feature is any skating. Now, if you notice that your cartridge is um, bouncing a little bit this way or bouncing a little bit that way, you just move this accordingly and that will stop that. Okay, so that's pretty much everything you need to know on a quick fix to your LP dock, uh, your Ion LP dock. I personally love these turntables. I think they're fantastic. Also, another cool feature is you can plug in your iPod into your dock. And from here, you can control it and play directly to your receiver. Now, I just have this hooked up into my Kenwood. Um, but it'll play directly from my iPod into my Kenwood. And I can play any of my MP3s off of this. And I, I use this Ion record player mostly for that purpose. Because I have pretty much transferred all my albums. And I got to tell you, that was a feat. You don't believe me? Okay, there are some records down there. There are some 80s, 80 RPMs. And then over here, some more records. Those are usually 45 singles and some 78s. I call them 80s, whatever. I round up. <laughs> uh, there's box sets down on the bottom. I've got a lot of my Christmas albums out right now because I am mp 3 in them, which is one of the reasons why I decided to do this video. So there's a gap right there, but normally there wouldn't be. You see that goes all the way up and across. So I have a lot of LPs. So that's uh, pretty much it. I love, like I said, I love the LP uh, doc, the Ion LP doc. It was not a favorite of most people. I mean, it, it is a pretty basic turntable. It's very simple. You the, one Another nice feature is you can replace a cartridge if you want uh, and put in a nicer cartridge. Uh, what I did was I replaced a Sapphire needle with a diamond needle, give it a little bit better uh, response, which was kind of nice. All in all, these are pretty terrific turntables for what they do. Uh, they're not by any means state of the art, but they will bring your records over to uh, a, a quick and easy way to bring them over to MP3. I mean, bringing them over to your iPod, then connecting your iPod to your computer, and then Audacity them and uh, making tracks is really quick and easy to do. You can actually set it up to where you, um, it's all auto. You press one button and, you, and it'll do all these things. Uh, I forget what they call that now. But anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching. If this helped in any way, uh, please let me know. Uh, or if you have any comments, uh, good or bad, I'm thick skin. I'd appreciate you subscribing, too, if you liked it. So here is my Ion LP dock. Two little quick fixes to make this thing play perfectly well. Thank you for watching. Like always, you have a great day and a better life. See ya.